A couple of days ago, I read an article or news that uh, some company invented an edible blockchain, and I thought, wow, finally we solved world hunger. Uh, we did a bit of blockchain. Then I read it again, and it was ed editable, so I'm just face Um The question is, how do we hinder random suits of patenting random stuff in the space and hindering the innovation that is happening by the whole fact of this thing being open source? It, it, you know, I'm not really worried about patents because patents really affect only the commercial companies in the space that are interested in doing commercial and proprietary technology. Quite honestly, if they're not fighting against patents, getting organized to create patent pools, which I have suggested and participated in groups to do, uh, then they are going to pay the price. Uh, they are going to spend a lot of their time in litigation over stupid, crappy patents over things that are common generic algorithms or systems that were invented by other people. Um, and we're going to see these fights break out. And quite honestly, they're not going to affect the most important thing, which is the broadly available volunteer-based open source software that we really care about, because you can't stop that with patents. Uh, they will slow down the proprietary software companies. Uh, they live in a world they built. And, uh, and they're not actually doing enough to fight these parasitic patent companies. Um, and, and I think you're going to see that problem. As for patenting an editable blockchain, um, you know, I, I, I've expressed my um, confusion as to why someone would miss the fact that irreversibility of a contractual agreement between two parties, one that may allow for refunds and multi-sig and consumer protection programmed in, or may just be a payment. That irreversibility is not a bug. It is the most useful feature, or one of the most useful features of this. It is a system that encourages autonomy instead of authority. It dodges the fundamental question of if you have authority to change and edit the blockchain. Editable blockchain is nice. It's passive voice, isn't it? Uh, what they patented is a system by which they can edit the blockchain. It's important to understand who the subject in that sentence is. An editable blockchain is a blockchain that can be edited, which brings up the question by whom and under what circumstances, which is the most important question. An editable blockchain that can be edited by a committee, an institutional authority, a hierarchy, a government agency, uh, whatever, 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 is really not a useful construct. We already have those. Again, I refer you to SQL databases with digital signatures. Um, we already have institutional money. We already have authoritarian systems. We already have systems of authority and control and censorship. What we have now is non-editable systems of freedom and autonomy and censorship resistance and free expression and the ability to enter into contracts between individuals that are encoded in a Bitcoin script, and which are absolutely inviolable, and guaranteed to perform exactly as expected. At least in the Bitcoin system, with its constraints, that is a promise that is very, very strong. And that strong promise is not a bug. It is one of the most interesting features. So I expect the next patent they are going to file is for the uh, open-air convertible submarine, with a drop-down soft top. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and other things like that, which are uh, really may, maybe the microwave oven without a door, so you can get a tan while you're cooking your burrito. Um, all of these are things that they can patent. Uh, patenting something doesn't mean it's useful, novel, or interesting. It just means that you first paid a consultant to come up with some nonsense, and then paid a lawyer to make that nonsense part of the permanent record, so that you can be forever embarrassed by it.